the Ineos Granadier. How it's going to look has just been revealed to the world. Why do we need to get excited? If you are like me, in that part of you still hankers for the old Land Rover, the way it was, the way it felt, the, you know that Land Rover thing, and you, you, you yearn for it, but you, you no longer really use Land Rovers because the Land Rover mark has changed utterly. But you look back with fond memories of what it once was. And when Land Rover finally revealed the new Defender, your heart sank. Because you just knew, just by looking at it, that it did not deserve the name Defender. That it was an utterly different vehicle to what the Defender was and what the Defender represented. And at that time, you thought to yourself, well, I do have... Well, the world has another card up its sleeve, and that card is called the Ineos Granadier. And when you, like me, saw that vehicle, the Granadier, for the first time, instead of your heart sinking, your heart skipped a beat. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and travelling to the remotest parts of the world. Let's get past the hype. OK, Mr Evans, you're doing a great job. So everyone's talking about it. There's a brand new 4x4 on the way. But what exactly will be in store for us? Representing Ionos in the development of this new vehicle. You're asking good questions and you're bringing good reportage, but it does sound like an advertorial. Ineos is creating the ladder frame in partnership with a highly experienced vehicle manufacturing company. Of course it's an advertorial. So there is some hype involved. For example, it seemed that the sort of last of the, the proper utility vehicles were, were about to stop. There was, there was a character about them that we all kind of felt we were going to miss and you know you look around and there was nothing that was, was really very appealing and you know Jim being Jim let's do something about it and as we basically worked out what it was about the, the character of these older vehicles what was the DNA that gave it that character and as we understood more you start to see why these vehicles start to look in the way that they do you know we, we didn't sort of set out to make it look like anything else it was just it was always sort of engineering left. Hold on a minute. You're telling me that that design... Yeah, we, we didn't sort of set out to make it look like anything else. ...is purely engineering-led and had nothing to do with the original Defender. You're not fooling anyone. Ladder frames have been the basis for some of the most iconic off-roaders for over 70 years, starting with the Willis Jeep. So you could ask, why would Ineos use anything else? We are not using a monocoque because we are not building an SOE. So yes, I, I, I get that you, you love four-wheel drive and that you are passionate about Land Rovers and you are saddened by the demise of the Defender. I get that and you want to replace it. I get it. Don't tell me that there isn't, uh, there are not major design influences that come directly from the Defender. I tell you what, after months of only being able to look at computer-generated models of the suspension... I must say, I felt a certain kinship when he saw those new components for the first time. It is so cool to finally be able to touch some real parts, but these are prototypes of course there's a whole heap of testing and fine tuning to go. Ineos has not been shy about sharing their their information about the development of this new vehicle and that's unlike most vehicle manufacturers but th there's a very good reason why they're doing it. 
You see, when somebody's bringing out a new model of a vehicle, they, they still want to sell the old model until the new model comes up and they want to, they want the new model to be a big splash. Wow, bang, whappity do, here's the new vehicle. We'll keep it secret and then we'll reveal it. Ineos has nothing to protect. They have no old models to protect. So when they say that that they're doing it differently from most manufacturers, it's completely logical that they should do that. They are building up the hype over a long period of time. Strong, stiff, rugged and reliable, ready for mud, sand, rock and, and wow, sand it's effective because I cannot remember a time where I've had more requests on doing a review or summary, you know, what do you think of the new Granadier? which means that people like me, people who love four-wheel drive, are saying, hang on a minute, there is a saviour out there, because we've given up on Land Rover completely. I mean, come on. The new Defender is just an, a Land Rover Discovery 4. That's all it is. The Land Rover Discovery as a model has moved on. It's become more luxurious and not as good off-road. And so they've replaced it with something, I'm sorry, it has, the, it has a little bit more payload than the Discovery 4, and that's it. You at Land Rover have created a car that will attract no new buyers because it's still expensive and it's still highly electronic and it still has got that cursed thing called air suspension, which is hopeless in remote travel because when it breaks, it cannot be fixed. It is a rumor that Land Rover will offer the Defender short wheelbase with coil spring suspension. Irrefutable proof that they are not targeting the 4x4 enthusiast. So, what have Ineos done differently? Where do I begin? So the engineers are in no doubt at all. The Grenadier skeleton will be a box section ladder frame. For example, they've been boasting about solid axles front and rear. Yes, no question. You want a really good off-roader, you put solid axles on it. Every time a motor manufacturer decides to eliminate a solid axle from their catalogue of vehicles that they build, they're actually retrograding in terms of off-road performance and off-road safety. There's no question about it. But here's something interesting. If you look closely at the chassis, Five link, that's, that means something. That is, they could get away with three. Many manufacturers get away with three, but they know. Look at a Nissan Patrol, five link. It's fantastically strong and it gives fantastic wheel articulation. So they're ticking one box after another. One of the worries, of course, is that they have copied the Land Rover Defender too much. So let's have a look at under, underneath. One of the weaknesses of the Defender was its A-frame locating arm. It's the arm that locates the axle to stop it moving sideways. One link here, the panard rod, mm -hmm. that goes from the chassis over here. To the axle. And its purpose is the guidance in lateral direction. So to stop the whole axle moving yeah. from side yeah. to side. You have to be strong because more or less the whole axle load in lateral direction guided by this link. So this has to be massive. You've got radius arms that stop it moving longitudinally and a panhard rod, or in the case of uh, Defender and early Range Rover and early Discoveries, an A-frame. Now the A-frame was not a good idea. It caused major axle tramp in those vehicles. The center ball wore very quickly. It had some issues and other manufacturers have proved that it didn't really work terribly well. They are not doing that with the Granadier. They have changed it for a traditional panhard rod. And it's the same setup at the back. Where have you got to now in terms of developing the final suspension for Grenadier? Yeah, so we have a great uh, prototype setting now. We have a real great ground clearance, very high distortion angles on the axle itself. This enables a good traction on every off-road terrain you can think about. Obviously, from what we're seeing, this isn't bull. Those are really good components. They're not, they're not slacking off when it comes to strength and durability. That's pretty obvious to me. There are other design cues as well 
that tells me that they are actually looking at some of the Japanese manufacturers. Down to the rear doors, that you know, we've got a split door, we've got a really thin one that you, means you don't have to open the big heavy door with a wheel on it. You can just open the little door, put your tool bag in there. Here you've got two doors, full width, full width. Yes, you recognise that that was a weakness in the Defender. You've got things like this sort of built-in utility rail and things that are kind of there. It's a canvas for people to go and build upon. What is probably the most significant single design element of this vehicle is that they have built it so that we can adapt it, we can play with it, we can change it and we can make it ours. And that is the essence of the hobby called four-wheeling. I kind of see it. Here's a vehicle that is massively capable off-road, but it's kind of up to you to sort of go and, and make it your own. So what, what stage are we at now? Coming out of COVID, coming out of that crisis, we have lost some time here and we need to make it up. We are not jeopardising the quality, so we need to find ways of testing uh, very hard, very rigorously. Ineos have been very clever in their marketing and their lead up to this, in that they've given these little glimpses, not only of the vehicle itself, but also of other vehicles being tested. I question this one here. Is this the Ineos chassis with a different body. What is that photo on the other side of you? That's actually a, a picture of uh, the winter testing. That is the Grenadier? This is a, a Grenadier prototype running in Sweden, yes. Look at the departure angles and approach angle of this vehicle. It's very good and even lifted up at the sides. That's, that's off-road thinking. The wheel sizes. That's a 16-inch rim with a tall profile tyre. Thank you. Look at the back. Look how much axle wheel travel they've allowed for in the body, which means that when that thing off is going off-road, it's going to be phenomenally good. Will it have an expensive traction control system? Don't count on it. I imagine they will put in differential locks. Thank you. We don't need more. Put in optional differential locks. Maybe rear one standard, front one optional. Okay? We don't need traction control. We're quite capable of driving the vehicle ourselves. Thank you for In fact, we prefer to drive the vehicle ourselves and not have a computer take over. Okay? Will it be as good off-road as, say, the new Defender by Land Rover? Uh, yes, it will be as good off-road but it'll be a hundred times better at carrying a load off-road. It's not just off-road. What about carrying a load off-road? Having clever electronics is all very well when you're going for a weekend trail with the family, but when you're crossing a desert, who wants it? We don't want it. So styling-wise, yeah, it's a... I, I'm hesitant to use the word blatant because, sure, the styling cues are very strongly Defender and there's n everything right about that. I have another question though. Where are you going to put fit the driver in that configuration? I hope the driver is sitting far more forward than in a Defender because in a Defender, any of you who know, and, and if you're particularly if you're a big person, you will know that the B-pillar hits you in the side of the head all the time. It's a terribly uncomfortable driving position, but I think given that you've made fundamental changes to the design in so many areas that we can see, I'm pretty confident that you're not going to repeat the faults of the Defender in the department, in the interior. We, we can't see that at the moment. There are no interior images at all, so we have to guess and we have to hope that you're doing it, gonna do a good job. But this here is a figment of their imagination. My conclusion, I'm hugely optimistic. I'm, I'm massively optimistic, but I, I don't wanna put damper on things, but think about it. How many would they need to make to make this commercially viable? All right, they would have to sell a certain number. Would they exceed the number of 
Land Rover Defenders as they used to be that kind of sale. Is that the kind of number you're looking at? You're probably looking at that kind of number as a guide. It's my guess, but as a guide. And you're saying, if we can sell that number, we can make a business of this. This is my guess that that was the, oh, an early supposition when INEOS got together and decided that this was commercially viable. By the way, that story in the pub. The story about a pub in London, the Grenadier, yeah. a bunch of blokes having a few beers. Sounds a bit, um, you know, uh, fairy tale fantasy, doesn't it? And coming up with this plan to build the yeah. ultimate off-roader. I believe you guys. That, is that really what happened? Or was it a much more conventional brief to you? No, it, it pretty much was exactly that. <laughs> it's in pubs where the world's greatest ideas begin. That land, uh, sorry, that Grenadier has Morris Wilkes written all over it. And of course, I think he started by writing his drawing on the back of a cigarette packet and then uh, on, on a beach somewhere, the outline of the first Land Rover. So it's a lovely story and the fact that you're calling it, calling it the Grenadier after the pub that you were in, that's kind of twee, but also nice. It immediately, and this is what I like about it, gives the vehicle an origin, gives it a, it has no heritage, but you're giving it a heritage. And if the heritage only started in 2018 or whenever it was, well, what's wrong with that? That's okay, but let's get down to realism. Who's going to sell it? Are they going to have Ineos dealers? One vehicle, one model with a few variants? Spare parts. Where are we going to get spare parts? It looks like engines, both diesel and petrol, will come from BMW and the gearbox, automatic only, from ZF. Good, solid German engineering. How much is it going to cost? This is a specialized vehicle. What, the Land Rover Defender in the UK when it was taken off the market was what, £28,000? Somewhere around there? They varied but with the different configurations, but in a four or five door was somewhere like £28,000. Do you think that the Grenadier is going to be that amount? I guarantee you it'll be more. It will be more. How can it not be more? How can a very specialised vehicle with quite a small very keen, yes, but small market and small numbers of buyers, they're going to pay more for an, for, for an exclusive vehicle. I would consider buying one tomorrow, but that's because I'm mad about four-wheel drive and it's what I do for a living and, and, and I would adore to get my hands on one just because, A, it looks so fantastic and all that we are seeing promises something really special. So I question how much it's going to cost. £40,000? £50,000? With that kind of price tag, you're going to sell as many as you had hoped or need to sell. I, of course, cannot answer that. But I do ask the question, who is going to support the owners once they've purchased it? In the UK, it's easier because it originates in the UK, but if this is successful, that, that vehicle is going to find its way to here in Australia. So I have an invitation for you guys now at INEOS. I know you're going to see this video. You know, welcoming uh, feedback and comments, and you know, it'd be great to get people to actually test it and, and drive it. My invitation to you is this. You are going to have hundreds of people offering to test the vehicle off-road for you. You yourself will have places and people that you know and work with very closely in the UK to test this vehicle off-road. And you will come back with some wonderful footage and wonderful stories about testing it off-road and doing your refinement tweaks, which you will no doubt do. My invitation to you is that I will test it for you. I'm offering this test for you in Australia, but this time it's not an off-road test. It's a long distance touring test. The kind of tour where you have to carry a full load, where you have to put the vehicle through its paces over a long period of time, longevity, hard punishment over week after week after week. Where are you going to get that done? 
And the other part is this. I want to work with you because, well, let's put it this way. <clears throat> I w A, I'd love to get my hands on it. And B, working with me, it's a two-edged sword. If it breaks, I'm going to tell everybody. But if it doesn't, I'm also going to tell everybody and people will believe me. So if you're really confident in what you've created, it's a win, 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 win for everybody. Actually, especially me, because I want to be one of the first to get my hands on it in Australia. But apart from that, and I will do a, we'll do a major trip. We'll do a major trip. Something spectacularly good. But I can also feed back a lot of information about its performance. So you can tweak some more, which hopefully you will continue to do. So here I am, excited about it, looking forward to it. Nobody has given a date yet on when we're going to be able to get our hands on it. And if I see in my lifetime one motoring manufacturer bring in a new model and they bring a solid front axle back to that design, I will retire a very, very happy man. Maybe this, the Grenadier, is what I was talking about and hoping for all along. Thank you for watching. Join me next time to find out more about the engineering of this radical new 4x4.